This is part one of two recordings in which I'm going to investigate the three inverse Laplace transforms shown here. Notice that they all have s squared plus a squared all squared in the denominator. That makes them a little bit trickier than usual. If there was no square in the denominator, just s squared plus a squared, then I suppose these would be quite easy. We would know them to be either, in the first case, sine of at, in the second case, cos of at, and in the third case, actually a combination of both. We are going to need those results without the square, so I'd like to record them here now. So we have L inverse of a over s squared plus a squared is sine at. I will need that one actually without the a on top, so let's divide through by a and have a 1 on top instead, and that will be 1 over a sine at. I'm going to need that result later, so I'll call it number 1. Number 2 is the one with an s on top. That one is just cos at. We'll call that number 2. Those should be familiar from basic Laplace transform theory. You can look them up in tables. Now there's one other result I need from Laplace transform theory, which is central and crucial to all the arguments in both these recordings. That other result is the one involving the derivative d by ds. So if the Laplace transform of f of t is capital F of s, then turns out that multiplying by t inside that transform has the effect of taking a negative derivative of capital F of s. Put another way, we could write that the inverse transform of minus d by ds of capital F of s is just t f of t. And that one is absolutely central to my arguments. So let's ring that and call it 3. OK, here we go. Now, first of all, bear in mind we've already introduced the idea of differentiation with respect to s. Let's look at those three original transforms. Squares in the denominator. Does that make you think of something in the context of differentiation? What about the quotient rule? When you differentiate with the quotient rule, you do have to square the denominator. To get s squared plus a squared all squared, what would we need in the quotient rule? We'd need just s squared plus a squared underneath without the square. Let's do a little bit of experimentation now, bearing all that in mind. I'm going to look at what happens when you do d by ds on 1 over s squared plus a squared. 1 on the top, just to keep it simple to begin with. Let's use the quotient rule. Then we get s squared plus a squared all squared. And on the top we get the denominator and multiply by and differentiate the 1, but that makes 0. Minus the 1 times and now differentiate the denominator to get 2s. So that makes minus 2s over s squared plus a squared all squared. Now remember this was a d by ds of something. So let's now write that, well, in the Laplace transform result number 3 we had minus d by ds, didn't we? So let's put a minus on it. Minus d by ds of 1 over s squared plus a squared is and that just changes negative 2s to positive 2s. Aha! So now we could write that the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus a squared all squared must just be, well, we've got to remove the 2, but that can be taken down to the bottom left, so 1 half times the inverse transform of negative d by ds of 1 over s squared plus a squared. 
and in turn that must now be one half t f of t and the f of t is just the trans inverse transform of the simpler thing 1 over s squared plus a squared but we know what that was it was 1 over a sine a t and so there we have the first of our results the inverse transform of s over s squared plus a squared all squared is now one half remember I'm looking at this and a t and well, let's keep the colour consistent shall we there needs to be a t on top let's start again there we go ok a t on top and the half and also an a underneath and a sine a t so that is the first of my results that I've got using the differentiation rule for inverse Laplace transforms along with some clever trickery. There are two more inverse Laplace transforms to look at and they work in similar ways but they're just a little more complicated so I'm going to do those in part two.